just had a call to go out and see a horse that's apparently in pretty poor condition and getting worse. Now, it sounds as though nothing's ever really gone right in her life. Her name's Sally. She's an ex-race horse. Now, typically, ex-race horses really struggle to have a bright future. My hope is if she's not in too bad a condition, then there might just be a way we can turn her luck around. Four-year-old failed race horse Sally has been dumped in a paddock. It must be her. Hey, girl. Chris has been oh, asked yeah. by the Randwick Racing Trust oh. to check her out as a possible candidate for their new rehabilitation oh, program you. for right. unwanted thoroughbreds. To put it in the simplest possible terms, if she fails this test for soundness, then she's off to the sale yards. And from there, you just hate to think about what might happen to her. G'day, mate. Hi, hey, boys. Chris. How are you? Yeah, good. How are you? Not too bad. Scott and Shane, who run the Randwick got. program, Sally. have arrived to hear what the verdict will be Sally. for Sally. So she's had three starts for a last, a, a second last, and a, a second last. So, yes, that's, it's embarrassing. I know Sally. I'm she's consistent. That up. <laughs> she is very consistent. <laughs> I'm going to give you a full check. There you go. She's obviously not in the greatest condition. Just coat's a bit ratty and a little on the skinny side. You look okay. Gum colour's nice and pink. The future's grim for horses that, that, are, that are left without the care that they need. And whether it's a you know, slow decline or whether it's something that has to happen, you know, they have to be taken away and put down, it's neither of them are good options, that's for sure. Who's this? Hey, gorgeous. Look at your head. You're a bit wobbly, sweetheart. Come here. Over at the Bondi Referral oh, Hospital Sash, Lisa is confronted with a kitten in terrible distress. Oh, look at that head tilt. Her eyes are spinning in her head. Hey, Cam. Little Cammy's just come in. She's eight months old and all of a sudden she's started tilting her head, falling over. Basically, she's got no control of her balance and she is really dizzy. <laughs> oh, sweetheart. Let's look at this one. Is that one a bit sore? The most common causes for this would be something structural in her middle or inner ear. So something like a polyp. It's all right, I know it's scary. The polyp is a mass of inflamed tissue, which is putting pressure on the balance nerve and causing shocking pain. Hi, kitty. The damage can be permanent. I'm sorry. She keeps wriggling. Come on, gorgeous. And go see mummy. Oh. Ouch. Okay, okay. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, off me. Come on, gorgeous, come on. I don't like to wrestle cats very often, but this is not being nasty. This is her just being really scared and wanting to hold on to anything that's stable because she's completely unstable in her head. So I'm gonna pop her in a nice dark cage and she'll probably feel better. Oh, oh, back. Ouch, I need the nails cut. Waiting to hear the prognosis is Cammy's owner, Amanda. I guess where do we go from here? I've tried to look in her ears, but she's quite sensitive. The next step would be to do a CT scan of her whole skull. Yeah. If it is a polyp inside Cammy's ear, she will need major head surgery. But there is no guarantee it will be successful. They often get worse okay. before they get better. It's a bit devastating, to be honest. She's just my little kitten. She's normally very, very in everything and has a great time doing it, so it's just a real shame to see her like this. Basic structure of the hoofs, all right? Seem to have any pain. Chris's examination of abandoned racehorse Sally is a matter of life or death for the thoroughbred. If we didn't get the call to come out, this horse would probably stand in this paddock for another who knows how long. You know, thoroughbreds in paddocks don't do very well. Largely, they can stand there and starve to death if they're not getting uh, the right sort of care. In some paddocks, the feet will grow out until they look like flippers, and then suddenly they're no good for anything ever, and there's, there's only one option, you know? She, she has the bare bones of, of what, and quite literally the bare bones of what could be, be quite a good horse in, in whatever field you, you had in mind. But, I just can't see a reason to say no. Okay, good. No, I'm happy with that, mate. I think I think you're right. We'll, we'll get it looking good. We'll get it going well and and uh, see if we can find her home. <laughs> see you in Randwick. Sally's now off to Randwick Racecourse, where her future will be decided. 
Isn't it funny though, the years are up? <laughs> she already looks a hand taller, doesn't she? Absolutely, she's a different horse than she was in the paddock. Hey, <laughs> she is. You remember the track, don't you? There you go. Yeah. Good girl. I just want to do one more final test just to trot her up and actually see if she's lame on any four of her legs. Ideally what we're looking for is that back hoof should actually come through and land in the same spot where the front hoof landed. If you watch closely, she actually does that. Mate, she's all yours. I think she's going to be a great prospect. Yeah, well, great. We'll give her a go and see how she turns out. This is the new home, is it? <laughs> this is Sally's new home, Chris, and this is where the rehabilitation program is based. Yeah. The, uh... It's social, aren't they? All coming out to check out who the new kid is. Absolutely. <laughs> Sally's been put through a series of tests today, and for a horse that's never really had too much luck, she's found some today. Okay, come on. Girl, I'm all done. Next time I see you, hey, things might have changed. She's come through them all and passed the ball, and now she's got a new life. Thanks, Thanks very mate. much, Chris. Come that's back something. in a couple of weeks, you won't recognise it. Mate, looking forward Thank to you. it. Thanks very much, Cheers. Mate. See you later. You look after the new kid, all right? Bondi Clinic. Perfect, Vet student Erin is carrying in a boxer who's been hit by a car in peak hour on the Bondi Expressway. What happened now? John is the Good Samaritan who's risked his own safety to rescue the hit run victim. Had she run, she would have run into the path of another vehicle, so I stopped. So he's not he's not your dog? Not mine, no. Yours? No. No. All right. Um, thank you for stopping though. That's, that's fine. In that sort of traffic, yeah. that's, that's a, yeah. a bold move. While the broken leg is horrific, Chris is more worried the boxer may have suffered a collapsed lung. Right now, she's gasping for air, and that worries me. We're now getting up towards 150, 160 mils, which is a huge amount of air to have leaked out of the lung into the cavity. So that says that she's probably torn an airway and actually being hit by the car, and that air is now rushing out, almost hissing out into that space. She's got a pneumothorax, so even though she takes deep breaths, she just can't get that air in quickly enough. She's been hit by a car. The boxer's she's owner, okay. Diana, has been lane. desperately she's searching she's for her beloved pet. Molly was chased out of the park by another dog and was too scared to come back. I just ran and ran and screamed. If the pressure of the air around the lungs gets too high, it just squashes them and she can't breathe, she can't get the air in. That'd be the end of her. Now that Diana's arrived, Molly's saviour John is happy to go home. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you so much. I'm so. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for stopping, too. You're welcome. Very good. Don't worry. Chris now needs to x ray Molly's leg and torn lung. The most amazing thing for me at the moment, though, is just the fact she's, she's just not responding to that. She doesn't seem to be in pain. She just seems as though, hey, what's, what's going on here, guys? Must be going through hell. Hey, puppy girl. Good girl. So we're giving Cammie her anaesthetic and then we're going to run the CT scan and hopefully get some more information on what's going on inside her skull. At SASH, Lisa's hoping a scan will reveal what's causing eight-month-old Cammie's chronic dizziness. Look at that. Ooh. Yeah, it's impressive. The CT results are a shock months, to Lisa months, and surgeon Andrew Marchewski. Wow. The scan really shows Cammy's middle ear cavity yeah. is now completely filled by an inflamed mass of tissue, which is causing her extreme pain. That's a tough kitty. That would hurt like hell. This is a big surgery. We've got to get in and clean out the middle ear, but the middle ear is right next to the inner ear. And um, if I damage that, we could make her signs a whole lot worse, where she, her whole world could be spinning. Um, so you've got to be really careful. Don't fall over, sweetie pie. Mum's there. 
It's a tough decision for Cammie's young owner, Amanda. It's going to get worse unless she has yeah. surgery. And there's lots of risks and, and surgery might not fix her in the end, but that's the best chance the that best she's chance got. Yeah. I want the best for her. So I'm hoping that the surgery can do it and then take it from there. Surgery is about to begin on eight-month-old Cammie. A growth in her middle ear is causing the kitten excruciating pain. Good luck, OK? Her whole middle ear is just full of a big polypoid mass of some sort, and I think it's actually burst through the eardrum, and it's putting a lot of pressure on her inner ear, which is why she's got all those signs of an eyes flicking and a head tilted to the one side. Her bone of the middle ear is probably ten times as thick as it should be. So she's been suffering, I think, since birth. So she won't really have a normal middle ear cavity anymore, but that's a, a small price to pay. You have now just at that part of the polyp that's gone first through his eardrum. I'm just gently trying to get it out of here now. Wow, that's huge. That tissue is sitting right around the inner ear, and so you'll be very careful when you're getting it out of there, you don't damage that. And uh, it's scarily close. All right, that'll do me. I think I've got as much of that tissue out as I can without sort of compromising or risking causing too much damage, but it was pretty bad. So I'm still a little concerned that she's gonna wake up with her world spinning. There you go. You all right, babe? The handy thing from this x-ray has shown that on that left side, which is what we were, we were working on before, there's no black line. So that's where I've actually done my work here. It's this right side where there's still air there. If I can suck that back out, we're a chance here. Two-year-old Molly was run over and left for dead. The boxer has a badly fractured leg, but her torn lung is the greatest danger. Yeah, we're just getting towards the end of it now. All I was praying for was that I find out well, this is a best case scenario in a series of worst case scenarios. A second set of x-rays shows Chris is winning the fight. To see her lungs looking like they're, they're fully inflating now or very close to it is, is a, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's a sigh of relief and it's, it's probably the way that, that Molly feels right now too. She can actually breathe. This is a tibia coming down here. Molly's leg has been broken in two places but she'll need to stay at the clinic for at least two days until her lungs have stabilised. I'll go home and cry now. Yeah, you've been through a lot. I think my adrenaline's wearing off. Only then will the courageous boxer be transferred to Sash for surgery. Bye, you. All right, I'll see you later. I'm going to say, I really admire Molly. The whole time she's been in here, no fear. Yeah. Okay, you've been very, very brave today, you have. It's going to catch up with her, though, and she's going to start to feel that pain and, and realise that she's got herself into a bit of strife. You leave the light on. You know what you want? Hmm? All right, we'll check on you during the night. Watch yourself, there. Over at Randwick, Scott's having some interesting moments with Sally's rehab. Steady, steady, steady. She looks a hell of a lot better than she looked when we picked her up. She's still got a fair way to go, but she's come a long way in the time. Steady. When she first came in here, she had the flared nostrils and the whole, you know, racing attitude going on, and it took her a while to realise that she wasn't going to have to gallop. Steady, 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 steady. The unwanted thoroughbred will only get a second chance if she can pass this re-education boot camp. Steady. What's up? Steady. Good girl. Definitely worth saving. They're all worth saving, you know. It's great to see that they get the opportunity to, to move on to, to something worthwhile in their lives, you know. I fall for all of them, you know. I, I really love horses, I really, I do. It's, 
a bit soppy, but uh, you know they're great animals. They do great things for us, and uh, it's hard not to fall for them. They're beautiful things. Not nice. Oh, sweetie. So, so brave. Three days after her accident, Molly has been transferred to Sash. Good girl. Yeah. The boxer is still in danger from her torn lung, but surgeon Andrew Marchewski can't delay her leg surgery any longer. We've obviously got to fix her fracture, but uh, her life threatening problem is the pneumothorax or the air around the lungs. A chest drain is being inserted into Molly to minimise the risk of the anaesthetic. So if there's a little tear in the lungs, we'll actually push the air through that tear and it'll leak outside the lungs and that will cause the lungs to collapse. And then suddenly she crashes and yeah, you've got to be really careful. I'm sucking air out now of the chest, yeah. That's a litre of air that we've got out of that without really trying very hard. It's a bit like Meccano doing this sort of stuff. A little bit more blood involved, but um, it's essentially Meccano. How's she going here? She's good, she's very stable. No problems with the breathing? No, she's breathing a bit more now. Right, so this is the last screw. But, um, I'm really pleased with how it's come together, to be honest. I think the leg will be 100%. I mean, it's, we've got a, two or three months of healing ahead of us. It's all right. Don't worry about it so much. You can put your tongue in. Go on, have a sleep. You have a sleep. It's all right. I mean, she was trying to walk on this leg when it was flopping all over the place, so I think she'll she'll run out of here. It's going to be fun keeping quiet. Cammy, A big girl. For eight-month-old Cammy, the world has finally stopped spinning. It looks so good. The delicate surgery to remove an agonising mass from her middle ear has been successful. From what I've heard, she's a lot better than what she was, but I'm just not, until I see her, I'm not sure whether it's all completely better. Hi, Hi. Kim. Hi, Kim. I think Amanda was in shock. I don't think she expected such a quick recovery. She was prepared for the worst, and when she saw Cammy, she was just elated. Let's go down. No, 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 no. Settle, settle, settle. Good girl, good girl. Three weeks after being hit by a car, Molly is recovering well and is back in her favourite park. I know you're expecting me, but I thought I'd bring along someone that <gasps> oh probably God. wanted to come along as well. Oh, John. Hi, Diana. Hello, and John. look at Molly. And I think you yeah, remember You want to say you? hello. I'm just stoked. Just stoked. Yeah. How, how anybody could, could hit not just Molly, but any any animal, and just leave it on the road. <laughs> One more. Why not? More? I can't imagine what I'd, I'd be doing right now if anything seriously happened to Molly. I'm really grateful. I'm very, very grateful. So, thank you, John. You're welcome. Big thank you from me, and a huge thank you from Molly. Well, I've already got that. <laughs> Considering the state of panic that Molly would have been in, if John hadn't stopped, she would have just kept on running into the path of another car. She would have been gone. John saved her life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, is that enough? I'm not, going I... to, I'm not going to give you any back though. <laughs> she wants to repay you with love. Okay. Been looking forward to this. Oh, I bet you have. Has there been much change? Mate, it's a massive change. You'll be surprised, I think. This was four year old Sally just five months ago. Oh, wow. Is that her? That's her. Scott's hoping he's found a new home for Sally. She just has to pass one more test. I'll need to sit on her and, and um, see what she feels like and then see her over a jump. If she can impress Kevin, Sally will begin her new life as an eventing horse. Basically, you get a, you get a feel straight away whether you like them or not, um, whether you're comfortable on them. Right now, Sally's jumping for her life. If she clears this, She's probably found a new home. Good girl. <laughs> Bit proud, aren't you? <laughs> proud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
got a new home. <laughs> Sensational. <laughs> it's a little bit sad when you let them go because you've, you've, you always form a bit of a bond with them, but uh, that's what we're here for. You have to remember this isn't just about Sally, this is about the thousands of ex-racehorses that have this huge cloud over their future. If they can be a little bit like Sally and have the chance that Sally's had, then everything starts to look a bit brighter. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.